deity of war, the sun and human sacrifice. Not only was this Aztec god an immensely powerful warrior worshipped and feared by the mortals he ruled, also, much like his fellow Aztec supreme beings, has quite a difficult name to pronounce. Served by fallen warriors and women who had died in childbirth, the eventual fall of him would signal the end of the Aztec Empire. Hello, and welcome to Pantheon Mythology. Today, come with me on a journey back to Mesoamerica, as we learn about perhaps the most powerful Aztec god of them all, Huitzilopochtli. Also, apologies in advance for any upcoming mispronunciations, please feel free to roast me in the comments. Huitzilopochtli, also known as the Hummingbird of the South, was the revered Aztec god of war and the patron god of the Mexica people. He played a central role in the creation myth of Aztec cosmogony and was said to have led the Aztec people to the site of their capital city, Tenochtitlan. The city's Templo Mayor, or main temple, was dedicated to Huitzilopochtli, and it was believed that fallen warriors and women who died in childbirth joined his retinue. After serving the god for four years, these souls were said to be reborn as hummingbirds. As god of war, he was believed to be an incredibly powerful warrior. He carried a shield, war darts, and a spear made of shiokwaki, a fire serpent that was said to resemble lightning. So, how did this badass come to be, I hear you ask? Well, there are a couple of different myths about his origins, so take your pick. According to one myth, Huitzilopochtli was the smallest of four sons born to the creator couple. Sorry, let me compose myself here for one moment. Ometecutli and Ometehuatli. His brothers were Quetzalcoatl, Xipetotec, and Tezcatlipoca. Together they created fire, the first male and female humans, the earth and the sun. Apparently, Huitzilopochtli was born out of flesh and remained that way for 600 years. Just bones then. Nice. The second myth tells of a fierce goddess named Coatlicue, who became pregnant while on Mount Coatepec. She already had 400 male children and one female child, Coyolxuacui. When Coatlicue's other children learned how she became pregnant, by placing white feathers between her melons, don't ask, they plotted to kill her. Huitzilopochtli emerged fully grown and armored from Coatlicue's womb and defended her by beheading Coyolxuacui and chasing away his brothers, who fled and became the stars in the sky. Slightly more eventful than the birth of my children, then. There was a dark side, unfortunately, and this was the sacrifices that had to be made to appease him. And with this, ritual sacrifice and self-bloodletting was a key offering to Huitzilopochtli, who demanded blood to be appeased. Bloodletting was a daily ritual for the Aztecs, regardless of age, gender or social status. Both humans and animals were regularly sacrificed in private and in public ceremonies. But public human sacrifice was the most significant. These sacrifices, often prisoners of war, were performed with elaborate rituals by the high priest. In battle, Aztec warriors would frequently wound rather than kill their opponents in order to capture them and bring them back for sacrifice. They usually killed the victims using a sacred sacrificial dagger. A common feature of these sacrifices was the removal and display of the victim's still beating heart. War was a major source of both human and material tribute. Human tribute was highly valued for its supposed power and it was believed that human blood was especially important. It was also believed that Huitzilopochtli was a fan of the consumption of hearts, giving new meaning to the phrase, my heart is yours. How romantic. The Aztecs attributed much of their power in central Mexico to Huitzilopochtli, the god of war. 
It was his guidance that led the Aztecs to leave Aztlan and his prophecy that directed them to Tenochtitlan. Huitzilopochtli played a crucial role in the Aztecs' conquest of other groups. While the Aztecs believed Huitzilopochtli to be very powerful, they did not think of him as invulnerable. They acknowledged that the god of war would eventually fall, and that his fall would bring about the end of the Aztec Empire. During the reign of Moctezuma I, one of Huitzilopochtli's temples burned down. The fire was uncontrollable, throwing water on the flames only made them worse. This incident was seen as a bad omen and a sign of what was to come. These predictions turned out to be true during the reign of Moctezuma II. The first Spanish attack on the Aztecs occurred when conquistador Pedro de Alvadoro attacked the city of Tecnotitlan during Toxcatl, a day of feasting dedicated to Huitzilopochtli, and it was during Moctezuma II's reign that the Aztecs' empire would fall, thanks to the Spanish. Despite the importance of Huitzilopochtli in Aztec religion, he has often been viewed in a negative light, primarily due to the practice of human sacrifice in Aztec culture. However, it is important to remember that human sacrifice was a common practice in many ancient cultures, and that Aztec saw it as a way to honor their gods and ensure the continuation of the natural order. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, We'd really appreciate it if you like and subscribe as it really helps us grow. And we release new mythologically delicious content every week. Be sure to check out our clothing brand, Pantheon Apparel, too. It features designs inspired by mythologies from across the world, including Aztec and, of course, the star of today's video. We're rated excellent on Trustpilot and ship worldwide. You'll find a link in the description. Click on the video on the left here to watch a video that YouTube has chosen for you. On the right here is our binge playlist if you want to go on a journey across the pantheons. But most important of all, thanks for watching and see you on the next one.